Now I'm going to attempt actually filleting this fish up with Mr. Joe Highland's hatchet. So let's see. That is insane, Joe. Now, um, normally I would turn, so let's go. Let's go down the, the spine. That is insane. Just watch your fingers. <laughs> there won't be but one person to blame. Me. That gonna be me. Look at that talent. You know what would be great, Joe? Mm. Is if we we cook lunch up by the trains today. Oh yeah. What do you think? I like it. Get to show you the ghost trains. Yep. Cutting the bones. Mm-hmm. Just cutting down through the ribs. Oh, you got that thing tight too. Yeah. No meat on it at all. What are you talking about, Joe? What are you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? Come on, guys, comment below. Comment below. Flipping? What do you think of this fillet job with the Joe Holland, look at that. The Joe Holland Axe. I'll tell you, somebody who's not gonna be happy are those Gorbies because you didn't leave any meat on the carcass. Oh my goodness, that is gonna eat up wonderfully. And you can, good gosh, look at this. Mm. Look at the fat, Joe. Oh, they're fatty. Look at the fat in it. Some people don't like Ooh. lake trout because they think they're oily or fatty, but I like it. Check that out. Filleted with Joe Holland's hatchet. Ugh. Now, I don't know if this is possible. I know this is sharp enough to do it, but I don't know if it's possible. So we're actually gonna try to take the skin off of it. And we're gonna use these pliers to help us since my hands are like frozen. So we're gonna lock, we're gonna lock these cheaters in. And let's make a flat surface, Joe. Make a flat surface. Something we can see. Here, you want my kneeling mat? Here we go. We're going to do it just like this, Joe. Just like this, Joe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Joe, you ought to go into sharpening people's. I do. Everybody in town brings their axes and knives over. I'm gonna tell you this right now. If I lived near you, you would have, every... oh, I got in too big of a hurry. Got in too big of a hurry. You must have a flag up. Look of there, Joe. Would you look of there? Oh, well, we got a flag. Here your, we go. Your midnight's up. Look at that. You That's didn't. thin. Turn that so the folks at home can see how thin that skin is. Look at that. Thin skin, just like my buddy Pat. Oh. He's got, he's got some fun. <laughs> we got a flagger. We got us a flagger. <laughs> you got your flabby beefcakes hanging. <laughs> oh. Every time, like you said, every time we get to doing something, something happens. Uh -oh. uh oh. He's about to lose five bucks. Or we are. No, yeah. we didn't see nothing spin, remember? Don't holler, it's only five dollars. Oh, huh? oh he, he got sideways it. again. Sideways hooked him. Oh, he's still alive. Oh. Drop him down, drop him down. Uh-oh. -uh. We gonna get us alive. Can I have that dead one up, Jingle? 
Here, you take it. Thanks. How'd that axe work? It looks pretty, you did a good job I skinning it. I skinned it with the axe. All right, guys, we are doing an adventure. It's really late in the day, but we don't care. We're gonna head in. I want really want to show David the ghost trains. It's like, it's a sight to be seen in the middle of the North Main Woods Wilderness. Thousands and thousands of acres, miles away from anywhere else. And he's just gonna freak when he sees these things. I know him well enough to know, but what else are we gonna do while we're in there, David? Oh, we brought us some food. We got us some fire, fire starters, and we're gonna cook on the fire again. So any of y'all who saw yesterday's video, you get to see some more cooking today at this video. But he told me bedtime stories. He was like my dad the other night, just telling me bedtime stories about these trains, telling me how they, you know, it was men and oxen who with axes and shovels and shoveled and axed their way in with these massive trains. So that right there intrigued my, my mind with history. So yeah, we're going on a history tour. We're going to school, we're going to school. What do they call it, a school trip? Or adventure trip, whatever. Yeah, we're going on like a trip. That. Yeah, what would they call it? We're going on a trip. It's what gonna do you be awesome. call it in school when you go on a on field trip? Field trip. Yeah, field trip. We going on a field trip, people. <laughs> yeah, not just that. There's also the tramways up there too, which is part of the train system, and it's just unbelievable. So, really excited to show David that, and really sh excited to show you guys that. So stick along. I gotta put this away because we're gonna hammer down riding in. We got some serious trails to get in there. All right, guys, we're here to one of the engines. There's actually two engines. And the pulley system that these engines did is mind blowing. So if you look right here, you got this major cable and you have these pulley systems with the runners with the spikes on them. That, that of course, that's a log. They would transport from a lake. From Eagle. From Eagle Lake that was way, a long ways that way pull it all the way to here to get it to this way to actually float the logs and get them down to the paper mill so this was actually built in in the fall of 1902 by fred dow and it was a steam powered tramway to move the logs and it's unbelievable it's got a 6,000 foot cable and these guys were way ahead of their time back in the day and i just think it's cool like touching a piece of history like that's six thousand foot long that cable six thousand foot long cable and touching a piece of history like this i don't know it's just it's cool it's cool we're gonna go explore a little bit more show you the other a few other little things but with a full head of steam this thing went three miles per hour oh my gosh yeah and it moved over a half million board feet of logs per day running from 4 a.m to 8 p.m on a 22 inch inch gauge track it was essentially a small railroad and you can see right here this is kind of the view where we're at of course it doesn't look the same anymore but you can see the logs coming in to there to hit to the lake to float it down the river the lakes to get to a paper mill yep and this whole thing's a testimony of the people who came before us their ingenuity and their willingness to take on any problem yeah yeah they the problem was logs are over there in that lake they need them in this lake mm -hmm. and there's three thousand foot in between it oh lord so the, and they ended up moving they ran this for six years and they ended up doing 100 million board feet went through this tramway right here mm, so that's, ships houses everything that's a lot of building done mm -hmm. with that for sure so pretty cool to see history and then this this was built 
out over the north end of the lake was was uh, the crib work like this. There's a crib work. There's still some parts of it out in the north end. We can't get there right now because the ice is sketchy. But this is one of the steam engines right here. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's just a piece of history that just gets forgotten. But they, I'm glad they've kept it. They've kept it up. That's old man's beer. That's what the deer eat when they're when they're rotten. That's the only thing the bucks will eat. They'll just grab a nibble as they're running by. It tastes terrible. I've tried it a bunch. So see this raised ground on your left? That's where the tramway. That's where the tramway was. So a million foot of board, board foot came across that. And there's still like cable and track on that ground right there from 1902 to 1908. But that's it, that's the tramway right next to us. And the crib work that ran across the north end of the lake was for these trains. Wait till you see these trains. I mean, cause you know where we are now. You, if you saw this on TV, you wouldn't appreciate it as much. But now you know how far we are from civilization. 100 miles from civilization, dude, to the wilderness. Just that steam-powered engine is amazing behind us. They brought that in by boat in the 1900s by steamboat, and then paddled and had horses to get it to here. All right, buddy. This is exciting. I feel it. You can feel all the souls yeah. still here on this block of land. Yeah. Campfires. Yeah. How many people died working here? Horse teams. It's oxen. It's, it's awesome. We're getting closer, I promise you. The suspense is building. Just the engine, the steam engines. You know, the engine that yeah. runs the train. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna give you the loop first, then we'll get out. Dude, you talk about power. When you step, I'm on a vehicle, and when you step and you're looking up at an engine, that that's pretty impressive. You gotta stand next to some of these wheels, like, and you're still standing on 10 inches of snow. 1926, 1927, King LaCroix brought these in from Lac Frontier, and Quebec. I'm, I'm standing, well, I'm standing on about two foot of snow, and I mean, I'm not even up. To where I need to be at. Oh my God. History, right here. History. That's cool. Like it? Oh, love it. I knew you would. Love it. Imagine being the man. I know. Like you're the man who's got the power. Just, I don't know how they thrusted it, but. Just imagine the power that guy felt. Like, right now, I got more power. You can go up in the engine. To move the earth. You can go up in the operating room if you want, right here. Uh -oh, yeah, there's a ladder, I think. Uh, I'll give you a boost if you want. Whoa, you're, you're the man now. Look at this. This is what I just got through saying. This throttle right here, imagine being the man in charge of this throttle. Like, man, just being able to just put the power to it. 
And looking in this engine, wonder how much wood was burnt in that. Huh? How much coal? That's amazing. What a boiler, ain't it? Oh my gosh. Joe, I think I can see your house. I can see Chamberlain Lake. And I think I can see the North Pole from here. That's how big this engine is. You are up there, my friend. That thing is a beast. It is. You think, do you think right here, do you think steam would have hit my britches and caught my underwear on fire? I think you'd be a cooked hot dog. I think I'd be more, I'd be called well done. <laughs> yeah. My britches would be on fire. 98 years ago, they pulled this thing into the woods. You know how hard it'd be to pull it in today? Dude, I try to move like a little sled or something and they, they brought it in with axes, shovels, and ox. That, that blows my mind. It's time to come down. I need you to catch me. Okay, me. buddy. Ju me. Jump, I promise I'll catch you. Uh, do it backwards. Let's do a trust fall. Oh, here we go. Trust fall. <laughs> come on, Joe. You got me. <laughs> uh, we ain't doing no trust fall. Even though I know you would catch me, I trust you. Buddy. I do my best. I know you would do your best, but I just don't think... Uh, it would be smart. Here we go. We are here. It's been a long day. We got to see everything. And yes, guess what time it is. Joe? It is time to put some calories in our stomach. I like it. A little short lunch. A little short lunch. We got to start the oven here. Good gosh, that stuff starts quick. Joe was telling me how quick birch starts, birch bark starts, but not that I didn't believe you, Joe, but it's just, wow. It's got some good natural oils. One thing you always look for when you first start a fire is you want to look at the smoke and whichever direction the smoke goes, if it's very calm winds and you don't have a good sense of direction, you always want to start the fire upwind because that wind is going to give it the oxygen to fuel the fire. So right now we don't have any dominant wind one way or the other. See how the flames are pretty much going straight up in the air. So it really wouldn't matter where you're starting a fire. You don't ever want to start a fire downwind. If you start one downwind, the chances of that fire taking off is going to be low. So, and another example would be blowing into it. So fuel, uh, fire needs fuel. Fuel is oxygen. See how that stokes the fire up? So always go upwind when you start a fire. <gasps> bear <gasps> bear there's a bear there it's a sam squatch <laughs> not crackle pop We have I'm just gonna be getting it warm a little bit. Oh what are we doing? Tacos? Yeah. Nice! Yeah. I did not know that. We are doing you the man. Tacos. That's it. Please tell me I brought a knife. What do you need? A knife. Not to eat. No, no, it's maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> we are working on.
the fish taco burrito. It's always nice when you got a knife with an axe. I'm scared to death of that thing. That thing's gonna end up getting in me. A sharp axe is a safe axe. It's when they're dull is when people get in trouble because they force it and then they have slips. Remember that. That is an awesome steak. Yep. One thing you're doing when you are cooking these uh, aluminum foil ovens is what I call them uh, is if you if you get them tilted wrong and the you know the butter and the oils that come out of the fish all float down to one side a lot of that fish will get that burnt burnt taste to it and it won't turn out perfect so a good thing to do while you are cooking through the fire is you can actually pick it up, rotate it, you know, make sure you, you keep it wet is what you want. Keep it wet that, that whole time while you're cooking it. That way she, she'll be good. Won't have any burnt taste to it. Joe is getting us some scallop steaks is what he's doing. There you go, buddy. I'm telling you, when it comes to metal and sharpening metal uh-uh you you don't want nothing of that man i might i mean uh gillette might think about sponsoring him to, to sharpen all their razors for just shaving our face my man knows how to sharpen something Sometimes you'll hear that. Oh, it was. And it's the oil leaking out of the. It's the oil. No, nah, I think that was just the green bush. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of them trains, Bob? Dude, that's impressive. What's wrong with that? Well, well, would you look at here? What'd you look at here? Joe forgot about scallops. We had them in the actual snow sled. And he's like, hey, I just remembered I have scallops in my snow sled. How awesome is that to actually forget that you got... Show the, show the folks at home how rich we are. <laughs> we are rich. This is pure scallops that were living in the ocean, what, three days? What are you... Uh, Two days. two days ago doesn't matter two or three days ago and one of his great friends who's my great friend now and i'm telling you thank you as, as you're watching this video kyle brandon mark kyle brandon Slim. i've got to hang out with some of the coolest guys ever here since meeting joe meeting good friends this trip has been an in incredible trip but yes we're getting ready oh look at the fat coming off dripping off of that oh my god is it looking good oh it is looking phenomenal look at the fat dripping off oh. of that bad boy i just want to stick my tongue underneath there and go <laughs> get all that fat oh my god these might be the old. tastiest scallops you've ever had Here it sizzling mm -hmm. in there. That sounds like tinfoil sizzle.
Don't let me forget that bag. We'll be coming I back. can tell you. I, you <laughs> Joe just at, set the scallops down in the snow and said, don't let me forget that bag. I can tell you right now. We'll walk I back. can assure you that them scallops ain't going to be forgotten about. We'll be walking back you and we have to. gum skipping. And she has broken apart, my man. We are... We are in the good with that. And I'm gonna say we are probably in the good with this. Scalps need a little bit of flame if we can get it. So since my man Joe has us, we're losing light a little bit. Oh, that's true. We gotta get going. We are going to oh, warm us fish up. Fish is done. Yeah. We got us uh, warming up our shell. Give us, give our shell a little smoke flavor, a little bit of fire flavor. David. No, that's perfectly fine. All right, grab that up. Won't you prop that? Grab that up. All right, here come taco number one. So what I like to do, we can't go wrong with a little bit of cilantro. We're going to start off with a little bit of cilantro, okay? And we're going to take some of this secret sauce and just do one little bead straight down through the middle. We're going to get us a little bit of fire roasted salsa. If you've never had fire roasted, I, you will probably know go back. So just use your hands a little bit. We're going we're gonna to take some of this fire roasted salsa. We're going to put a little bam on it. We're going to touch it up with a little bit of lemon. Then we're going to take some dry coleslaw cabbage to give it a little bit of crunch right there and then of course the main ingredient which is cusk cusk here we go look at that beautifulness look at that beautifulness joe my man you have treated me like a king you have put me on fish you have broke me in on a lot of new first things in life. And it is my honor, my honor to give you David Dudley's Cusk Taco. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we go, guys. Drive one of them into you. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is dang good. Wow. Oh god, it's good. I don't know if you guys can see smoking. Mm. That togue? Yeah. For all the haters that say togue's terrible, let's try it. Mm -hmm. I would eat the south end of a northbound togue any day of the week. Joe? Got it? Thank you. That's a beast. That's a beast of a burrito for Hito, a David Ito, a Dudley Ito, a Dudley Ito. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, good. That was awesome. Thank you. Mm. I, I oh, dessert, David. Dessert. What's for dessert, buddy? 
fresh. Joe, Joe, Joe. Gil. Joe, I don't, I, I really don't think you should eat that. You I know, agree. I, I don't. I agree. I just, but I'm gonna. I'll be the experiment guy. Yeah. If, if I eat all of these and I don't get sick tonight, you can cook, <laughs> good, you, good idea. You can cook your own. You, so you, I, let me know if they're terrible. I'm gonna start, you know. Let me know if they're too hot. Mm, you know, eating one of oh, these. Oh, wow. Might even be better than the big O. Oh, the cow. Got that smoke. Mm. We started off with smoke. Yeah. And ended it up in the. What a combo. The butter sauce. Good golly, Miss Molly. Wow, so tender, too. Those are big scallops. Mm. Joe. I don't know if I can thank you enough. <laughs> this trip, truly, I got goosebumps underneath my arms. I don't think this trip is going in my memory bank, something I'm not going to forget. Guys, after experiencing four days or five days up here in Maine, I am a Maine lover right now. I do love this state. It is, until you actually experience it, you don't really comprehend how gorgeous it is. And I've told him, I said, I think Maine is like the East Coast Alaska. It's still wild. It's still like frontierish. A lot of history here, a lot of lakes, a lot. If you're an outdoorsman, I think this is one of the, this is the Alaska of the East Coast. So Joe, thank you, my man. Ah, no need to thank me, buddy. That was a blast for me. I had an absolute great time. I learned a ton and it's great to reconnect. You know, David took me under his wing when I got to the pro level and you know, he's up way up here at the top of the game, you know, best in the world for several years. And here I am just coming in and he took me under my, under his wing and just great guys. So the least I could do for him is to give him a great time up here. And I'm looking forward to the next time already. I am not looking forward to my flight tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding you. I. I wish I could stay up here more days with you. So I think I said it early. If we get enough comments, I think I might come back. All right. If hey, people like it, if people are liking it, I might come back. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I don't think this is going to be my last trip. Joe, I will be back. As long as there's an open door, I will be back oh, with you. Here you, you got an Maine. open tent door at all times. There you go. Open tent door that we slept in last night in 13 degrees with no heat. Guys, thanks for tuning in. If you like David on my channel, let me know. This was like an all-star cast this week with Brandon the boys, Pat. There's another all-star coming in tonight. And, of course, the MVP right here mr david dudley we'll get him back on again thanks again for watching guys i've had a blast i hope you had a blast we got like one more half day with david here and i might end up staying here another day or two i don't know i don't even know if there's ice at home so where am i gonna go exactly